Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be discussing the use of a call list in Business Contact Manager. Um, my previous videos were always about uh, hands-on leads and um, projects and accounts and contact management. Uh, this time we're going to get into a brand new feature, uh, something very cool, something called call lists. So I, I had already created some notes, uh, at least in my mind. Uh, the uses for a call list is, the first use is to follow up with leads, accounts and contacts in a very organized fashion. The second primary use is to market to leads, accounts, and contacts. Then, of course, there's accountability among, among employees. Suppose you give someone a task to do, like call the following 30 people, uh, cold calling or follow-up calling. So you're able to actually see that they did the work and the percentage of work that they had done. Uh, employee activity tracking, you'll be able to see exactly how far they reached with each person or, or what it is that they spoke about. Uh, historical track per phone log. Uh, you'll be able to actually always see that initial phone call within the history of the lead or contact and then we are able to initiate the origin uh, the origin of the call uh, whether it be a follow-up call or a service call and I'm gonna jump into that so I just got a couple of notes here and let me pop up and open up my uh, business contact manager build so this is my BCM 2013 BCM again no difference to the 2010 flavor um, you'll see here I have some sample data I just created a bunch of leads and I'm going to give you guys a scenario. Suppose that I have a company, these are my leads, I went, I purchased a list of somebody, or I met these guys on a show, or you know, something of that nature. And these particular people are not actual clients, they're just leads, meaning they have some interest in my business, uh, but we have yet to market to them. So let's say I have a guy named John here in my office, and I want John to follow up with all these leads. But I can't just say, hey, John, do me a favor, call all these leads and note what happens on a piece of paper. It's just In the real world, it's not organized, and uh, it negates using BCM for organization. So how would John be able to do this? And I want to be able to track John's work and see that he's doing it, or maybe I'm doing it myself, and I want a very organized and noted fashion of doing this. So on Business Contact Manager, um, we've already discussed all the business record types, uh, and the activity type. So what we didn't discuss is the marketing tab. So I'm going to jump and hop over to marketing and BCM. You'll see you have a marketing section right here. And as soon as marketing opens up, I'm going to go and let me hide this gadget because this is a new database. Uh, I'm going to go into call lists and I'm going to create a brand new call list. And I'm going to call this call list. I'll give it a name one second. I'm going to call this John's list. And it really doesn't matter. I can name it anything. I can name it any particular activity or tracking that I'm doing um, to be able to give it a good a good track of, of what exactly is happening here. Um, so I'm able to open it in the future if I ever need to. So now I have my call list here. And immediately take a look. You'll see that all of my contacts and leads will appear. Now suppose I only want John to call leads. And suppose I only want John to call, suppose John is an uh, East Coast uh, rep uh, and he doesn't call people over in California. He just wants to do work in New York. So I can go here and add a quick filter by clicking on Review and Filter, Advanced Filter. Uh, and I'm going to say, let's say, Business State. Uh, where is Business State? Business State equals, and I want him only to call people in New Jersey. And it appears that I only have one person in Jersey. So this is a bad example. I'm going to use New York, where the rest of my people are. So what am I really showing you here? I'm showing you here. Let me just put in and wine here. I'm showing you that you're able to filter out who's going to be called. So in this list in particular, there are 10 people who we're going to reach out with this call list. This is a very organized call list that pulls data directly out of your contact manager uh, and gives you the ability to create a formal and well-organized list. So in this, in this sense, um, let me just show you real quick the window. Uh, each contact here that you click on, You'll see here the name will change and the phone number will appear ready to, di ready to dial. So we'll be able to actually start dialing right now uh, and create these phone calls to these people. So I'm going to save and close this and I'm going to show you in the analysis tab that we have a John's list which has not yet been executed, meaning he has not started calling these people yet. Uh, so moving forward, let's go back into the call list. Suppose that these are all leads and they are all leads and John has a script and in the script, I'm telling him, introduce yourself, introduce our company, what we do, um, you know, and try to pitch our service or product or business idea to the following people. So John now has a task, and I'm able to monitor his task with this call list. And he's able to actually convert these leads to a contact as he speaks to them. 
So let's move on and let's start actually using this. So now let's say John is about to start uh, making his calls. So let's say it's my list and I'm about to start. So the way we begin is we're going to click on start timer because we're going to time this activity, how long it's going to take to do all this work. Again, this is where accountability comes into play. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to call uh, Brunk uh, Paulette. So I'm calling Paulette. I'm, I'm just starting the call, and let's say we're in mid-call right now. I'm going to mark this as call complete. I'm going to take some notes here. Notes, blah, blah, blah. Blah, basically. I'm just adding some random information. So I'm speaking to Paulette. I'm wasting my time right now talking. Uh, she's not interested. Maybe she is interested. I have no idea. Let's move on to the next person now. We're going to click on Save and Next. You'll see here that now I have a little mark here that I spoke to Paulette. So call 1 of 10 has, has happened. Um, I'm calling uh, Elizabeth, and she's not answering the phone. I'm going to leave her a message, and I'm going to click on Save and Next. Now, if you look at the little icons here, you'll be able to see uh, how many people I've called and how many messages were left. So you see here that I, I've already managed to call one. I had one good uh, call and one call which I had a message, which I left a pes uh, message for the person. And notice that the notes are now going to be recorded also to the contact's history. So in Paulette's case, I wrote blah, 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 and notice that now it's actually in her notes as opposed to uh, Elizabeth's note where I have no notes because I left a message. Now I'm calling uh, Alexander, uh, and let's say Alexander is interested. Follow up sometime later tomorrow. I'm going to go here, and now I can create a follow-up reminder for myself for tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to move on forward, call complete, and click Save and Next. Notice here that on the top, in the recipient list, you'll be able to immediately see that 3 out of 10 are completed. One person I left a message to. Now, let's say this is a, a very hefty task and it takes time. I'm going to save and close and go out of this call list. Notice that now, under analysis, uh, call list is now in progress. What, me what it means is that it's not complete. I know that John did not finish calling these 10 people today, uh, and this call list is still pending. So, meaning he has to come back to work tomorrow and complete it. When you open up the call list, you're going to immediately be able to see that we left a message to Elizabeth, and to Casey, uh, not to Casey, to Elizabeth, and we called Alexander and Paulette. That leaves me with a total of seven more people to call. So I can just move in and, and continue, and I'm going to say, all right, let's say I spoke to this person, call is complete, call is complete, left a message here, left another message here, left another message, and let's say call complete, and then the very last person is uh, Woods, Leah, and let's say the call was completed. I'm going to save this. This call list is now completed, and in each person, there'll be notes. So our, our person, our person who's actually working this, and here, let me open up uh, Paulette's record. Our person that's actually working this, uh, and let's look at their history, and we're able to see in their history a phone log, and that phone log contains that blah, blah, blah text that, I, that my guy, John, had initially entered about the call. So now when I speak to Paulette, I could just look at her history, and I could see what was initially the deal, what it is that was offered to her, or how did she react, or etc. It's very, very important to have this kind of thing. You see how it integrates together. Now, I'm also able to hold John accountable now for his his uh, calls. I'm able to see that he called 10 people, he left four messages. So his job is not necessarily completed, even though this call list is now still in progress. His job is, is not completed, because he actually has to go back and call the remaining people, the people he left a message to. So he's actually accountable to do that, and we have a reminder also that will pop up tomorrow to call Elizabeth. So it's very cool the way this whole thing works together. Um, so let's say now I, he completed the call with Elizabeth. Say we completed the call with uh, Jeffrey, completed the call with Michael, and he left a message again for Karen. Just left message, and save and next. Okay, and save and close. Now notice he's still held accountable for his work. Our call list is nice and saved, says there's one more person to call. And let's say now I'm going to mark this complete because I just spoke to uh, uh, Carrie or John spoke to Carrie. So what does this mean? This means that now all my people are called, all my leads are called. At this point, uh, my call list is actually completed, though it says in progress, I think it has to update. My, uh, my call list is completed. Everything is done. Um, my guy has spoken to all these people who were added to this list. Now, let's go back to leads real quick. Let me go back to uh, to my leads. And you'll see here, when I open up a particular person, like let's say uh, Alexander, right? And I look at his history, 
I could see the date that he was added to the call list, and, and I could see that, um, you know, John and made a call, and see, I, I remember making this note, is interested, follow up sometime tomorrow. I could see the note here uh, that had occurred, and I'm able to tell that this person was spoken to by John. I could actually see who created the, this particular record, when it was created, the date. The person, of course, the history remains throughout the entire life cycle. Uh, and then I have the phone log. So, in essence, what, what am I really trying to teach you guys is that you're able to use this really powerful tool when it comes to uh, uh, speaking to... And here, let me go back here, call list. We're, we're able to use this extremely powerful tool uh, to be able to call and follow up with people. So, the mark closed is actually what's going to uh, finish. You see here, mark the activity as closed. So, I can campaign, closed activity, save and close. Uh, and this analysis is closed and completed. So we're able to actually mark different statuses here, something, either current activities or closed activities. One thing I didn't go over, but uh, once it's marked closed, this list is now done. John has finished. I can actually base a commission to John based on this work, uh, whether I want to pay him per success rate, uh, whether he actually managed to convert one of these people, like Paulette, let's say he called her up and offered her some services. Um, he's able to actually convert her right now to a business contact. And now she's no longer a lead, and she's out of list. She's going to be out of this list in the future. And here, I'll save this list. Let's go back to my contact management, and I'm going to hit back uh, business contacts. You'll see that Paulette was converted now to a contact, and I'm actually able to open up her record as a contact. Look at her history, and see that she was converted because John spoke to her. He called her. Uh, and manage to land her business or give us an opportunity to make some business. So this is a very, very cool thing. Um, you know, it, it has a lot of uses in, in, pra in the practical world, whether you're a telemarketer or uh, you're a short team, you're short staffed, uh, you have very few people and you want to be very organized and you don't want to lose out on leads and you, you want to be on top of your game, you'll want to use this call list feature because it's actually very, 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 very powerful. Uh, tool where we're able to add as many people, filter them out. We're able to filter out the people uh, by state, phone number, uh, or our custom fields. Let's say we take some information down, like how many children they have or how many employees work in their company. We're able to actually say only add people to this list who have five or more employees or, um, you know, who, who's a uh, uh, net income. Uh, net during the year is uh, over, let's say, uh, 100,000 or something of that nature. So that's really what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you uh, this really powerful tool. Uh, and keep in mind that you can also add timestamps to the phone log. It's very, very nice because you could just type something and then add another timestamp, ta type another thing, add another timestamp, and so forth. All BCM features work together keep that in mind they work together we can actually add history items also let's say we're talking to uh, uh, Casey which is uh, a con oh, at this point Paulette is a business contact so we can add her to a list also and we can click on new history item and we can add a brand new phone log a brand new business note a brand new project task uh, we can even email her directly out of this call list suppose that um, Paulette says, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you send me some information about the offer? And you could say, sure, absolutely. Uh, and you say, it's you in front of a computer right now? Check your email in two seconds. And you can click on add task, mail message, and you're able to send. You can even create an appointment uh, right on the spot, which is very, very good if you are practice, if, if you're um, working in a medical practice, for example, and you're using BCM small office, and you're using this to manage um, patients or anything of that nature, you're actually able to create appointments based on call lists, which is very, very cool. And this applies universally and globally to many types of businesses and industries uh, where you have to make phone calls, ba um, appointments based on calls that you're making on a list. So instead of the caveman way of doing it with a pen and paper or using a spreadsheet, this is very, 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 very good, uh, and you'll be able to use it uh, throughout BCM and call every single entity, including your custom lists. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. So this is uh, something I've been meaning to make for a while. Um, you know, often I talk about this and I introduce it to people, but I really wanted to make a video so they can see it for themselves. Uh, and then if they have any questions, usually give me a call or email me or contact me and I can help you out furthermore. But this is really the icebreaker. Uh, very, very easy to use. Very easy to understand. And, you know, best part is the power which it holds. Because you can do so much with this. It's a, such an amazing tool. Uh, with that said, I'm going to end the video. Thank you very much for watching and all my videos and for subscribing and commenting and liking and sharing and 
I appreciate all my viewers and I, you know, all the the emails I receive from people. Very nice that you take the time to watch and learn. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm appreciate I appreciate you as much as you appreciate me. Thank you very much. Bye.